Hello and welcome to today's MTS preview live stream. Today we're going to talk about the floor sessions, the emerging technology uh, theater that will be on the exhibit floor of the Media Technology Summit that's being held on the 16th to the 19th of October in Hollywood, California. And in a moment, I will introduce your speakers, Chris Barnett and Romero Montes de Oca, co-founders of Immersive uh, Dimension. Uh, I am uh, Joel Welch. I'm your host for today. Um, I will uh, not take up too much of your time here, um, but I want you to notice, uh, you look up in the upper uh, right-hand corner of your screen, you see that there is a QR code. Um, we would love to see you at the uh, MTS. And uh, so if you scan that code, keep it handy. Uh, don't register quite yet. Wait till after this uh, stream, uh, but you'll have the uh, link to register. Um, that way, uh, keeping it handy, you'll be able to listen to what our speakers have to say. And uh, I'd like to give you a little bit of information about the floor sessions, if you don't mind, because it is a new service that Simpty is offering. And the topics that are on the uh, program committee list are there in front of you. You can read that, that bullet point list, uh, ranging from uh, content matching and measurement to using Simpty SD 2064 based fingerprinting. I'm not going to read the whole list to you. Uh, QD OLED for reference uh, grade, large format HDR monitoring, which as I understand it, uh, the uh, large uh, re reference monitors are quite difficult to uh, produce. And then of course we do have today's topic as well, which is uh, 3D virtual production workflow with uh, Simpty SD2110. Uh, those are the uh, sessions that uh, will be on the exhibit floor, as I, as I mentioned. And uh, I'd like to uh, now, if you don't mind, give uh, our speakers an opportunity to uh, join me on screen and uh, tell us uh, a little bit about themselves. Uh, Chris, Romero, let us know who you are and what you do. Thank you, Ramiro. Why don't you start? Thank you, Charles. Thank you for having us. Uh, yep. Uh, Ramiro Montesioca. I'm a broadcast and system engineer. I've been on SEMTI for a long time. I'm also a member of uh, SEMTI RAS, Rapid Industry Solutions for Onset Virtual Production. And currently, I'm on the chair of um, uh, Camera Tracking uh, Subgroup. And I'm the co-founder of Immersing Dimension. It's a company dedicated to 3D virtual production. Thank you. And I'm Chris Barnett. I'm a virtual production and broadcast system engineer as well. I've worked for corporates, agencies, and now film and television with virtual production. And I'm the co-founder of Immersive Dimension. And we are really excited to be here. And we are very excited to have you here. Um, going to bring up the slide that has your uh, talking points. And uh, I do have a question. Um, why are these sessions important? Why is why is it important to talk about these, these topics and your topic? Yeah, I can take that. Um, one of the main things that uh, the industry needs to understand right now is that uh, from the engineer part, we need 72110. It's one of those things that uh, at the beginning was a really good idea, and then it became a necessi necessity. Uh, unfortunately, because the pandemic and supply chain, um, it's one of those things that it, it didn't work that fast for the industry because, uh, you know, there were problems on the supply chain, basically. But uh, very specifically for virtual production, we need 2110. It's one of those tools that, um, you know, a lot of manufacturers finally are applying to their workflow. And yeah, that's that's the main reason. You have a follow-up question? 
I do if I unmute my microphone. <laughs> 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 Look, I've, I've only been doing this for like 30 years and you know, you think. Anyway, um, so what are, what are the important takeaways from your particular session? Ramir, why don't you take that one too? Yeah. Uh, so we go back to, to uh, 2110, but very specifically for virtual production, it's going to be metadata. Uh, and that's going to be our, our very strong uh, part of the session. And uh, on the RAS group, we were uh, selecting metadata for the whole industry. We're talking about from camera to, to uh, tracking metadata, LED panels, you name it. Everything that is on the workflow, uh, we're uh, not selecting, but just what is most, most important on, on the metadata. Uh, now, we need a place where to, to send that metadata, and this is something. And um, one of my biggest uh, concern about, you know, the future of the group is uh, where we're going to use that uh, metadata, how we're going to use it. Um, so uh, there's uh, there's an effort from Paul Briscoe that he proposed it, uh, in 2018, the use of fast metadata. That was for 70, uh, 2110 dash 41 and 42. Uh, his proposal was uh, welcome, but not finalized. And it's one of the things that I want to finish uh, it, just to, to have a place where to put that all my, that metadata that we need for build production. And that's going to be a big part of the session, uh, educating uh, about 41 and 42, 70, 21, 10, 41 and 42. And we're also going to have an activation that, that demonstrates a 2110 end-to-end -end workflow and the efficiencies, right, that you can be earned um, uh, and the gains that can be earned uh, by leveraging that workflow. And we're really excited uh, about presenting that demonstration. Wonderful. Um, what, does, what does the future of uh, virtual production look like with uh, SD2110? I'll take that one. Um, before we talk about the future, I think it's important to talk about the present, right? And the, the present dominating philosophy for studios today is this concept of transmedia. Um, it's just the leading philosophy behind studio strategic decisions on how to approach creating content. Um, it's a simple concept. Meet people where they are and meet them everywhere, uh, satisfying every form of delivery mechanism that exists. Uh, from phone to laptops to headsets, IMAX theater, uh, theater, movie theaters. Um, there are so many deliverable options, including video games, um, that uh, in order to get the highest ROI out of a production, uh, it's, it's best to meet all of those different delivery mechanisms across every single vertical. Um, you know, so virtual production methods really serve this philosophy well. Um, the assets that are generated through virtual production can be repurposed you know, across many delivery channels. Um, and it's, it's why virtual production has become so popular. And the goalposts are moving. So talking about the future, right, uh, which is immersive 3D. And this extremely high resolution and high frame rate stereoscopic capture expectation uh, is screaming up the charts in terms of demand. Um, more brands are introducing more and new hardware with just jaw dropping specs and capabilities and feature sets to provide this new level of entertainment. Um, and, and that's where immersive dimension comes into play, um, with the mixed reality, stereoscopic 3d experiences and how do you create them? Well, we have designed, right. The new workflow for, for doing that. Um, you know, it used to be that IMAX was the top of the format to encode for, and now it's immersive 3D. And so that's where we are. Um, immersive Dimension is a technology innovation studio led by Ramiro and I, and we're introducing novel and proven workflows through workflows through R&D to deliver this stereoscopic 3D uh, format at the highest level, um, including leveraging 2110 workflows to get the fastest, lowest latency performance out of our systems. 
um, you know, that can be a very important part of virtual production workflows into the future. And, and we believe that strongly. Um, some of the features that we're really proud on delivering with this workflow is the instant gratification that everyone's come to expect through virtual production, uh, control of the production environment, higher ROI on the investment of the production um, through leveraging transmedia, um, and, and then adding our own special sauce to introduce maximum flexibility to every team and every department along the entire pipeline. Um, and that's going to you know, be very well received, particularly by the VAD departments um, and the different departments that have been asked to change the way they work uh, because of virtual production. Um, we're adding flexibility to that uh, and to those teams um, so that everyone can enjoy the process right to the furthest extent while also reaching these really crazy high resolutions and frame rates that were previously thought to be impossible in the virtual production wor workflow. Um, and so, you know, we're, we're really excited about talking about this um, advancement in virtual production and how 2110 can play a really important role in realizing a lot of the efficiencies uh, that, that are necessary, right, to produce at, at this level. Um, and I know we still have some time, but uh, I hopefully answered the question there. Um, I'd like Ramiro to have an opportunity to talk about some of the R&D and the partnerships that we're doing. Um, in addition to the new hardware solutions that we've had to create in order to connect the dots for leveraging 2110. Um, so if there's time. Certainly, will those be um, on the exhibit floor uh, for people to come in and talk about and and specifically how uh, it relates to um, the uh, learning session on, on emerging technology in the theater? Yes. Yeah, so the, the new hardware solutions, right, that help to fill the gap for 2110 and, and metadata uh, is, is going to be part of, of that discussion. And so uh, I think, you know, uh, Romero, um, you know, I, I'd love for you to speak to that. Yeah, no, you know, it, it wouldn't be possible without the really good partners. We're, we're working with the Broad Panels and Megapixel and NVIDIA. Uh, those are three of the main partners that allow us this to happen in, in, in a way that uh, virtual production wasn't able to do it before, uh, even a year ago. Um, when when virtual production got a, a, at least a taste of uh, 2110, what 2110 can do to a workflow, um, everything changed. Uh, we're talking about latency, we're talking about uh, interoperability, uh, we're talking about uh, how everything is going to go from beginning to end and all the data come together to one place. Uh, without these kind of partners, this will happen and we, we thank them a lot. Uh, the other part is uh, uh, working in R&D with them allow us to, to make requests and, and to also work really fast on uh, in, in a way that it would be impossible, you know, from the outside. So, um, and the other part is also the RIS group. The RIS group for us is, is part of, uh, and, and that's why I am asking um, not only the, the film industry, which uh, we have a big part of on the RIS uh, group, but also the broadcasting industry. Uh, I, I will ask more people from the broadcasting industry to join the RIS because uh, but the production is everywhere right now. It, it, it's not just the film industry. You, you have an TV studios, you have like a, a permanent setup, and we need to hear from them, especially from the manufacturers. Um, there is a lot of things that manufacturers can help and they, they should be able to help in the future, especially with metadata. Um, does uh, even talking with some, some of the uh, uh, manufacturers, uh, I have really bad news on, on that side because uh, I wouldn't name it, but uh, they're getting rid of the metadata because they don't know what to do with it. And, and that's not what we want. So we want more manufacturers being part of the uh, uh, RIS group. And, and that will be my biggest message here at, at the summit. Uh, they, they need to join the group. 
we need then, to know what they need and they need to know what, what we need actually too. And then Ramiro, will you talk about the, the black box innovation if, if there's time? Yeah, well, to be honest, the, the reason we made the uh, black box is because nobody did it and I, I need it. <laughs> so it's one of those things that, that happened because uh, there was a, a hole in, in the whole world floor. And what uh, does it do? So basically, it takes all the metadata that uh, you have on building production, you put it on one file, and that metadata lives with the video. So uh, regardless of what you do with the video, you send it to post-production, that metadata is going to be there. Um, there's a couple of companies uh, trying to do the same, and they're doing it really well. But uh, we need to push forward the SMT uh, uh, standard because that's going to put it together and, and be more, you know, for, for the whole industry, not just for a couple of brands. Um, so, yeah, this is a black box. It's a SMT 10 black box where we record all the metadata and eventually you can use it and anywhere on the block workflow, not only live, which is big part of the, the, the idea, but also, you know, offline on post-production. Thanks for that opportunity. Um, and we still have some time for some follow-up questions. Yes, and I'd like to uh, invite our guests, our viewers, to post their questions in the uh, chat of their social media platform of choice um, and we are streaming to linkedin youtube and simpty's facebook page <clears throat> chris you mentioned you mentioned uh the limits of resolution and i believe uh uh there was one other it's, it slipped my mind what frame. are the limits here yeah frame rate what are what are what are the the limits what are we talking here well so you know, traditionally in virtual production, the the limits to how much how many frames that you can push out from your your content playback uh, has has been quite low, right? People feel lucky if they get twenty four frames per second. Um, with immersive three D and these headset deliverables, the expectation is much higher, right? Ninety, ninety six, one hundred and twenty, mm. um, and and that that is going to just ever increase. Uh, and so Ramiro and I have put together a um, we've innovated uh, a few different technologies together to solve for that. Um, and we're really excited about sharing right, this solution with the, the virtual production community and, and content creator community and studios everywhere to empower them to now meet this, this new top of the funnel of the transmedia pub pipeline so that, um, you know, they don't have to, to leave out a whole subsection of these, you know, new users that are going to be coming into the market and expecting amazing entertainment. Um, you know, I, I don't want to name names, but there's a certain very large company that just, you know, introduced a new headset. Um, and, you know, in order to deliver to that stereoscopic, you know, 96 frames per second um, at 4K, right, per eye, um, th that was un unthinkable, right, in the virtual production pipeline previous to uh, the system design that, that Ramiro and I have put together. And so really, we're really, really uh, proud of it and excited to share about it during the summit. Other things I'm really excited about, you know, at the SEMPTI Summit is just helping to evangelize the leadership of SEMPTI, right, about 2110. I mean, Ramiro has been a part of um, 2110 for a very long time uh, and these groups for a very long time. And the amount of education and knowledge um, and insight that he has because of um, the leadership of, of SEMPTI and, and the way that sharing is happening in that group uh, is is critical to to our success. Uh, I'm so thankful to to have him as a partner in this endeavor. Uh, we would not be as far as we are today uh, without that kind of insight. So I'm really excited to to help promote what Sempty is doing to advance um, you know the industry. We we have a couple of questions from our uh, from our audience, and I'll put one up here. Um, how can uh, virtual production professionals transition? From legacy systems to SD twenty one ten based workflows, effectively. Yeah, I, I can answer that. Um, uh, probably a, a little bit more money because you have to update the, the hardware, right? But 
I think one of the key things that actually we're doing is the metadata. The metadata is going to be really important for, for the whole workflow. Um, again, some hardware can be updated. So it, it, it's not that you have to change the whole thing. Uh, the uh, special megapixel, you know, you just can up, upgrade uh, part of the hardware. And the other part is going to take a lot of, uh, you have to be precise. So it, it, everything on, on 21 then is unforgettable, especially when, when you're talking about uh, 240 frames, right? Uh, everything has to be pixel accurate on timing. And it would be impossible without uh, 2110. At, at this point, it's impossible. Um, so I, the beauty of 2110 is that you have to, and this is for manufacturers too, you don't have to pay licenses for like for HDMI or uh, display board conversions, right? Those are very expensive IPs that you have to pay if you have if you want to uh, make hardware for that. I would say that 2110 is going to be cheaper than uh, implementing, you know, in the case of HDMI or, or Display Board from the manufacturer part, uh, point. But uh, you know, for the consumer, uh, I would argue that you're going to save more money. That there's a lot of thing, uh, there's a lot of hardware that is going to be redundant and, and unnecessary. Uh, you're talking about network, so all the video hubs. Uh, I'm sorry, but they're going to disappear. So, and and all, all the video broadcasters, they they understand that. But so they're you know uh, jumping into into the networking business right now. Um, again, from the consumer point of view, it's going to be way better and cheaper and faster. And talking about future uh, proof, uh, 2110 is, is future proof. So that's the big difference between what we have right now with uh, you know, the jump from, from HSD to HD to uh, uh, higher resolutions. Uh, and, higher resolutions for, for 2110 is just gonna, it's gonna be simpler. And what's great about coming to this empty summit is that you can learn about all of this granular information on the transition, right? From you know, SDI-based workflows to 2110, uh, because you know, we think it is inevitable. And so what better time than now, right, to prepare and to learn about how to make that transition? Absolutely. And and the technical program itself is just so full of, of valuable, deep technical information. Um, uh, some of it is, is going to be uh, very practical. Some of it's going to be theoretical. Some of it's going to be um, case study based. Um, and the floor sessions themselves are going to be more specific to implementation. Is, is that correct? For instance, you'll be obviously talking about product um, and uh, perhaps how, how uh, your product can, can benefit uh, with the uh, implementation of, say, at SIMTSD 2110 uh, to the benefit of the, uh, of the industry. And Speaking of which, um, a question has come up. Can you share some examples or use cases where ST2110 significantly significantly improved virtual production processes? Uh, basically, it's going to be speed. Speed is uh, key. And I already mentioned the, the metadata. Not because we're making a product about metadata. It's just like it's necessary. Uh, 2110 uh, is pretty much it's going to be the glue that puts uh, the future of virtual production together. Uh, very specific. Uh, if, if we're talking about speeds uh, and camera tracking, that latency is going to be reduced significantly. Uh, what, you know, currently we have, I think the best that we have is uh, probably five frames, but in a really good day. Um, this is going to be a subframe, uh, you know, reduction. Wow! And and the same thing for uh, XR. XR is something that you need, you know, to reduce that uh, um, delay. And again, we're talking about subframe. 
Yeah, I agree. And the, you know, the workflow that workflows, right, that Immersive Dimension is putting forward, it it's all centralized subframe, right, nanosecond precision. Um, and so, uh, what really helps with that, right, is yeah. IP protocols. Um, and SEMT2110 is a mature protocol that we're really excited about leveraging. Um, imagine you're on an elevator, you know, the typical elevator pitch, right? And I, I, I don't mean to put you, you guys on the spot here, um, but you need to convince, let's say, let's say you need to convince people to attend the floor sessions and you can specifically need to convince them to uh, attend your session. Why should they go to the theater? Why should they go to the emerging technology theater? Uh, I'll take this, but I, I uh, like every convention happens that if you pay attention, you're going to see the future, right? From the safety point of view, when you're talking about um, standards and what the future is going to be and how we, we're setting up the, the, the future, uh, people is going to be ready for preparing for the next changes, basically, and what is ready right now which is another you know, big surprise for, for a lot of people because, again, be, because of the pandemic, now we're ready for new hardware to come out. And, and it's coming out right now, it, very specifically on, on, on the 2110 uh, area. So uh, I would say is that it, it's, it's, it's knowing what's going to happen. That's, that's the big take. And the proof is in the pudding, right? So you can come and see it for yourself, right? See a a live demonstration uh, and see the efficiencies that and gains that you get from from using you know end to end twenty one ten workflows. I mean, we're talking about the future of virtual production and uh, immersive dimension is already being described as virtual production two point oh. Um, and we wouldn't be able to you know get that high compliment uh, without leveraging right the systems that provide the highest level of efficiencies uh, and speed uh, and accuracy in order to to deliver on that. Um, and so, yeah, uh, come come to the activations, check us out, um, check out the activations of our neighbors. Um, I'm pretty sure you're going to see glimpses of the future and uh, it's going to be really exciting. Oh, I forgot. I'm supposed to mention this QR code right here on the screen. <laughs> if you scan it, it'll open up a page where you can register. Um, you know, don't go, don't go ahead and register now, wait until this is over. Right. But then please do register to come to SEMTI. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to put, I'm going to put up another question or it's actually a, a state, a request here from somebody. Um, it's please explain network infrastructure standards that are required for uh, 2110 in perspective of nest, uh, network industry standards that already exist in other industries. Is, is that something you can speak to? I'm not a big expert, but uh, it, it's, it's a big issue right now. So we're, we're talking about uh, routing, basically, mm -hmm. and separate the networks. That That's one of the big things that I can I, I can talk about. But um, very specifically on, on, on uh, delivering packages for 2110 is that it's simpler than you think it is. And that's one of the biggest fear for um, manufacturers. I have a couple of manufacturers asking me for help for, for, for doing the, the 2110 integration. Um, it looks complicated, but it's, it's really not. Uh, and the network part is the most important because you have, you're gonna have so much data coming out of the pipelines and but uh, I have to give credit to, to SEMTI, the uh, SEMTI engineers that created the 2110, they use uh, very well-known tools already yes. on, on, on the networking side. And they repackage it in a way that, you know, accommodates uh, broadcasting. Absolutely. So, so um, I'm not a network expert, but uh, I work on, on, on protocols uh, level. Uh, allows me to get into the nitty gritty of uh, you know well, how the package work. On the networking part, uh, yes, the, um, there might be better people to talk about this than me. 
but yeah. And, and <laughs> look, that's that's why it's going to be so great to come to the summit, right? Um, because manufacturers are going to be there showing the switches, right, that are compatible and the ones that you're going to need um, in order to to leverage this workflow to you know the the highest order. Um, and so just come on down um, and and take bring bring a notebook, right, and learn. Uh, this is an opportunity to learn and network and set yourself up for success uh, in the future. Um, and so, you know, we're going to leave that one as a teaser to try to get you y'all to come and, and check us out. And I absolutely cannot close this without making a plug for SIMT education um, because uh, IP is at the very core, routing, switching, and uh, a lot of the uh, standards and protocols that have been used in the IT industry just for, for years and years and years. And fortunately, SIMTI offers two courses that can help in this regard. One, well, actually three, now that I, I think of it. Um, we, uh, SIMTI is a, a, a accredited Cisco Networking Academy, and um, we offer the CCNA courses. Um, there is also a course on um, IP essentials for broadcast, broadcasters. And then there's the Understanding SIMTI ST2110 uh, course. They're all virtual, all delivered virtually. Although if you want your company to uh, offer them on site, we can do that as well. We have run out of time. So Chris Romero, I want to thank you very much for your time and uh, for your expertise. Um, I do want to put up the registration QR code one last time so that folks have the opportunity to snap it, register, and uh, register twice. Bring a friend. Bring as many people as you want to. Uh, with that, um, thank you again. Thank you to our guests for being here. Take care, and we will uh, see you next time, and uh, we'll have another preview. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think the next one is a preview of the overall RIS um, program, and um, we have one on our keynote. So thank you very much. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Bye-bye now.